Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2018 with Blackburn Rovers. We're back for another season. It is now 2025-2026. And so far this season, you can see on the left-hand side, we are five games in and we are sat third in the table. I seem to have actually worked out how to play the game a little bit better. Before we get into the games that we've already played and the two games for this episode... Let's go through some of the transfers that have taken place. Starting off with release players, Curtis Headley, Joe Van Rosic and Jim Higdon have all left on free transfers. There's been quite a bit of business leaving the club. John Flanagan, now 32 years old, he has left and joined Sheffield United for 155k, which is better than what I was expecting to get for him. We've also managed to get 325k for Arsen Diakite. He's gone to Troyes in France. Never played a game for us because he didn't get a work permit. Wesley Eduardo left and has signed for Legia for £375. But we do have a sell-on fee for him. I was quite annoyed with this one. Mark Durand, he's left for 5.5k to go to AZ Alkmaar. I believe we might have a sell-on fee for him. Basically, he was out of contract. Um, does it say on here? I don't know. Yeah, he was out of contract um, at the end of the season. He refused to sign a new one. He almost, almost went to Scotland. And then AZ Alkmaar came in and made an offer for 5k. And I went, yes, go there. So, Mark Durand has gone, which is a bit disappointing. Gianluigi Pacheso Rosso has also left. He's gone to Millwall, who are also in the championship. If I'm correct, he scored three goals in five games. We got 575k for him, which isn't a huge amount of money, but considering we got him on a free, we didn't really use him too much last year. I'll take it. Another player off to Legia Warsaw in Poland is Mame Mbai. Didn't get a work permit. I'm not sure how much money we got from him. It wasn't a huge amount. It, it was like a couple hundred k. Marko Zunic has gone back to his native Serbia to sign for Kukariki. Kukariki, yeah, it's, it's a lot easier to say than it looks. He's gone for not a lot of money, wasn't getting any games, and now he's 24. And finally, Sebastian Thompson has signed for AAB in Denmark. Another player, he, we've had him for absolute years. If you look at his career stats, we've had him since 2020. Was I even at the club then? But he's going on, out on loan everywhere. You name it, he's been there. He's finally left the club. We got a little bit of money for him, but he's gone. Let's talk about some of the players that have joined the club then. First through the door is Elia Petrelli, Italian striker. Starts the game at AC Milan, I think. I think he's... A no, he's at Juventus. Starts the game at Juventus. Played nine, scored five for Juventus. Very good footballer. He's coming on a free transfer. Problem is, I haven't been playing him because I've changed my formation. Next up is a player that I'm very excited about, but he doesn't have a work permit. Eric Men Menjiva? Salvadorian right-sided player. He can play as right back. He can play as right midfield. I was planning on playing him as a right back. He's five foot two. I, I don't think I've seen a player that small ever on this game. He's come in for 625k. Doesn't have a work permit. I don't know if he's ever going to get one. He's gone out on loan to Leon, which they are Mexican. They are Mexican, yeah. So he's gone out on loan to Leon in Mexico. Hopefully he comes back and we get to play him. Next through the door is Democratic Republic of Congan central midfielder Gaishel Nisiala. Nisiala, sure, him. He's come in from PSG for £750,000. He's a decent player. Doesn't really get too many chances at the moment because we've changed the formation. Also, he's 5'5 five five as well. Why am I signing so many small people? Ivan Bulger Basic is the next player in. 23 year old Bosnian striker. Very, very good player by the looks of him. He's played a few games already, scored a goal. He's got eight caps, eight caps, eight goals and 16 caps for Bosnia. He's come in for £1.1 million. He's only 23 and because Bosnia is part of the EU now, he has a work permit, I think. And the final player to join for money, we've also signed three loan players, we'll get to them in a minute, is Ciprian Dogaru, the Romanian centre-back, only 22 years old, current abilities to Two and a half star, potential is three and a half star. He's very good. I really like the look of him. I need to try and play him a bit more because at the moment he's not getting a huge amount of games. 
In addition to those players, we have also signed Joey Guest on loan from Leicester. He is a 21-year-old English centre-back. Jan Schmidt on loan from Leverkusen in Germany, 19-year-old German centre-back. He is very good. He's already played three games for me so far this season. And Christoph Fowry, 18-year-old French centre-back. He's come in as a hot prospect. So basically, he's going to be playing under-23s football all year unless I really need a centre-back and then I'll play him. And finally, as we always have to do, let's go through the loaned players. So there are, there's a lot of them have gone out. Henry Wilcock to Swindon, Vasil Lup to Cambridge, Darren Fox to Boston. We spoke about Menjiva to Leon. Pierre-Alexandre Collignon has gone to Bristol City, Rab McNally to Scunthorpe, Lamine Traore to Crotone in Italy, Danny Salvagione to Udinese in Italy. Tried to get him a work permit, didn't get one, but... In January, he should get one because he's just picked up a whole load more caps, which is why he's gone to Italy to try and learn Italian because I've got a lot of Italian footballers. There's thinking going on up there. Moussa Giroud has signed for Dundee on loan. Jim Glendon to Portsmouth on loan. Adam Hansen to Peterborough on loan. Dave Cox to Staleybridge. Leonardo Suarez, the goalkeeper, has gone on loan to Real Betis for two years because he wanted to leave and I didn't want him to leave, so he's gone there for two years. By the time those two years are up, He'll also be Spanish, so he'll be able to play. David Ward to Darlington, James Jolly to Gateshead, Jacob Freeland to Mainhead, Dick McMillan has gone to Preston, Michael Forrest to Peterborough, Duncan Greenwood to Port Vale, Bohomo Lohovi has gone to Exeter, Mark Catchpole has also gone to Port Vale. Paul Blake has gone to Alfreton, Abdullai Fall has gone to Ujpest in Hungary, I think, for a loan fee, so we're getting some money for him. Adelma Deb has gone to Hearts in Scotland, so we're getting money for him as well, £12,000 a month. Now Ennis has gone to Nottingham Forest, getting money for his loan deal also. Quite a lot of players have, uh, have gone out on loan. I think some of them might have actually come back. Yeah, Jim Glendon's definitely come back. Before we get into the first two games, which will be Watford and Brighton, let's go through the results that have already taken place. First game of the season, 3-1 victory against MK Dons. Paul Oakdina getting himself a hat-trick on 42-76 and an 84th minute penalty. Ian Todd pulled one back very late on in the 93rd minute. Also, Michael Gasser missed a penalty, but we get three points. Carabao Cup, a slightly rotated side. This one for the game against Mansfield. We do win 4-1. Jim Glendon, Paul Oakdina, Xavier Bulistix and Dave Shepard, who is a young right winger. Gideon Zellalem scored a goal for Mansfield. We all remember him when I signed him a couple of years ago. Then a somewhat ridiculous game against Queen's Park Rangers. It was a 5-2 victory. Joey Scenes with two. Bulistix with a goal. Oakdina with a goal. And Nisiala also with a goal. Dave Gillespie gets two for QPR. We win 5-2. Our first and only defeat in the league was next. A 1-0 defeat against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Guillermo Cotungo. I think they just got relegated from the Premier League. I can't remember. Or did they? Not sure. Then a 2-2 draw against Sheffield Wednesday. Bullistix and Gasser were the goals for us. Diego Pinto and David Concha for Sheffield Wednesday. We get a point. It's not a bad point. Carabao Cup time and we are knocked out. In the 120th minute, Jake Rodber with a goal right at the death gives them the victory. I wasn't happy because we were easily, easily the better side. And then finally, a 3-1 victory against Bournemouth. Bulger Basic, Allen and Michael Gass with the goals for us. Cortinovis with a goal for Bournemouth. 3-1 win there gives us three more points, which means the league table looks a little bit like this. We are sat in third place. We are three points off the top. We are joint with uh, Millwall, MK Dons and Ipswich. Obviously, it's early on in the season. So far, we've started quite well. Let's go on to the first game of the season that I'm going to show you, which is going to be the Watford game. I'll see you at the other side of this fade to black. Can we keep our good run to the season going? Up next, we do have Watford. They're currently sat 12th. It's early on in the season, so they're actually not doing horrifically badly they've just lost one more game compared to us the starting lineup that i'm gonna go for today as you can see we're playing a 4-4-2 nice and exciting i said at the it might have even been last episode basically i said if hull can win the league and get 102 points playing 4-4-2 maybe that's we what we should try that's what we're doing and so far we're not doing too badly. So, in goal is going to be Carles Carreras. Back four of Steve Simpson and Jamal as the fullbacks. Bullistics and Morris Sportelli as the two central defenders. Sportelli is annoyed that I didn't sell him to Torino. 
I need to start playing Sportelli more because I did pay a reasonable amount of money for him. So I feel like I need to get my money's worth. And he's a decent player. Midfield quartet. On the right-hand side is Clive Todd. On the left-hand side is Jim Glendon, whose average rating is a 7.99 so far this season. He is doing ridiculously well on that left-hand side. Michael Gasser partners Dennis Montoya, the Costa Rican, who is now Spanish, if we go overview and information. He's Spanish. He spent two years, I think, or three years in Spain. Three years in Spain. So he's now Spanish, which is amazing. Strike force for this match is going to be Andrea Damianov is playing as a deep lying forward on the right hand side. Ivan Buljabasic is going to be the complete forward up front. For information, Joey Scenes is still here. He's got himself a hernia. He's out for a few days. Paul Oakdina, he's not going to be on the bench. He's slightly injured. We will see him in the next match, but we won't see him in this one. Ah, great. Watford appear to be doing 4-4-2 as well. It's been a while since I played the first five games of the season. I've actually started recording a different save, which I don't know when it'll be out, so don't hold me to that. Um, but I don't remember how well we play, whether I need to do anything in particular during these matches in order to get the results. 20 minutes in, a Watford corner comes in. Sportelli has given away a penalty. Morris Sportelli has given away a penalty. No, it wasn't. It was Steve Simpson. It is going to be... I don't know whoever it is taking it against Carlos Carreras. Gonzalez. Carreras tries to save it. He goes the right way, but it is 1-0 to Watford after 21 minutes. Ake with a throw for Watford. Gonzalez plays it into Ducour. Ducour's to knock her out. Knock her out's effort is just over the bar. So far, two highlights. Both go on Watford's way. Going to demand more from the team. We're at home. We should be doing better than this. It's not made a difference at half-time. It is 1-0. We've had four shots and only one on target. The assistance team talk was all right. Let's keep going. Soon, I'm going to have to change something, but I'm not really sure what, because basically Sportelli's just playing terrible, and that's the only real thing I can take from it. We've got a corner straight away. Glendon takes it. At the back is Buna Sticks, and it is one apiece. Xavier Buna Sticks, unmarked at the back post for a centre-back. That's ridiculous. Look how much space Bula Sticks has. Why is no one marking him? Sportelli's still playing terribly, but he's going to stay on for a little bit longer. Damianov, Michael Gasser, ball forward doesn't make it. Montoya, Gasser once again. Bulger basic in the area. He's had a go. It's a great save from the keeper. Sedebu gets it clear over the halfway line. Bula Sticks heads it forward. That'll end the highlight then. Vaklik with a free kick just outside his area. Benekophobe tries to win ahead of Jamal, gets it. Sportelli's header down is only as far as Ducor. Nokarat. Jidong one. Back to Johansson. Forward Ducor. Ducor to. Well, Benekophobe's got it now. I'm getting confused. Nokarat in the area, cross it in. Jidong one's at the back. He's hit the post. Stevie Simpson gets it clear. It's going to be a corner. Nokarat probably. Yes, it is. Here he goes. Steps up to take the corner. It's gone deep. Sportelli heads it clear. No one's going to get on the end of that. Maybe Jim Glendon. He does have a bit of pace. Jim Glendon goes through the back of Decor, but did get the ball, apparently. Highlight straight from the front. Sidibe. Nokarat doesn't get there. Dennis Montoya does. Damianov. Playing out of position because I don't actually play an advanced playmaker anymore. Bulger basic. Back to Glendon. Glendon to Gasser. Gasser tries to play it through, but doesn't. Gasser gets it back, though. Montoya. Forward to Bulger Basic. Plays Damianov through. It wasn't a good pass, and Ake plays it back to the keeper. Where is this highlight going to go? Montoya gets it just inside the Watford half. Damianov. Damianov to Clive Todd. Todd to Glendon at the back. It's 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 a penalty. Damianov's fallen over. I don't know what happened. Nathan Ake has fouled Damianov, apparently. He's going to step up to take it himself. Where is he going to put it? Are we going to take the lead from this? Andrea Damianov into the, into the right-hand corner is a great penalty. It's 2-1, an hour played. Straight after the goal, it looks like we have another highlight. Glendon gets the ball, though. Plays it forward. Kofi gets it. Back to the keeper, Vaklik. First time pass to Moore. It's Liam Moore. Johansson. Ducour. Ducour's ball forward to Morel. Watford slowly but surely building an attack. Gonzalez, the penalty scorer for them. Morel. Gonzalez again gets a little bit of space. Fortunate for us, but they still have the ball. Morel, Benekafobe, Buller Sticks tries to get it off him. He does get it off him. Gasser plays it all the way back to Carreras. First time kick upfield. Doesn't clear the defender. Nokarat. Through ball. Morel's in the area. Carreras makes a save. It was a weird save, but he did save it. It's a corner. 
Knocker at takes. It's cleared by Jim Glendon. I was just about to do a substitution, but we've got a highlight already. Sportelli's free kick to Simpson to Todd. Gasser in the middle. We've not seen a huge amount of Clive Todd. Speak of the devil. He gets the ball, whips in the cross. He's hit the bar. Glendon, wake up. Jim Glendon wasn't awake to really do anything. Right now, okay, we won't do a sub. We'll have another highlight then. Johansson, Gonzalez. Ball over the top. Benekophobe is one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. I should have done me sub. He's hit the outside of the post. Now we do the subs. Bulger Basic has come off for Russell Kingdon. He's sat on the bench because I need English players. And I didn't I don't actually have any other English strikers at the moment. So Russell Kingdom is on the bench. Surprised he's getting an actual game. Sportelli's coming off as well. For let's give Joey Guest a game. He's not actually played for me yet. That'll do for now. We've got what's that? 23 minutes left to play. Montoya gets the ball. It's whipped in by Stevie Simpson. Jim Glendon's in the penalty area. We are 3 1 up. That kind of came out of nowhere. Jim Glendon, once again. Once again, Jim Glendon is going to get himself a nice, decent, high rating. And he might, if he gets over an 8, he's on 8.5. His average rating for the season is going to be like an 8.3 at some point. This is insane. Just under five minutes of normal time left. I'm going to do a sub. It's going to be Clive Todd coming off. And we're going to see Nisiala coming on. He's not really a right winger, but he can play there. Injury time has disappeared. Montoya gets the ball. There's 10 seconds left to play. This is just the uh, the winding down highlight of the match. And this is a very good comeback and a very good victory against Watford. That result then leaves us at second place in the table behind the only team. Uh, not the only team, actually. One of two teams in the league not to lose a game. Sunderland. The other team is Wolves, but they've drawn three. Sunderland, three points clear of us. Same goal difference, though. Jim Glendon's average rating in the league is a 7.87 after six games. In the Carabao Cup is an 8.75. Overall, it's an 8.09 in eight games. That's He's got five assists and two goals. Next up on Wednesday night is going to be Brighton away. So I should probably make sure that I give my team a bit of a rest. There we go. And I will see you after this blur fade. It seems like we are the last team to be playing from this little set of fixtures. So we've dropped all the way down from second to sixth place. So a win will put us back into second place. Brighton sat 18th. They are the lose. Oh, they are the losings. They they've they've lost four. They've drawn none. They've won two games. So chances are this is not going to be a draw. We are going to stick with the same starting lineup with only one change. Ivan Bulgebasic has dropped to the bench. Elia Petrelli has come into the uh, the starting eleven. Paul Oakdina is back on the bench, but he's still not really match fit, so we might see him at some point. Joey Scenes still injured, won't see him at all today. Can't have that match squad because we haven't got enough English people. Fixed. I stuck Alfie Jones on the bench. Looks like everyone's playing a 4-4-2. For some reason, Brighton are doing it as well. Just realised I probably shouldn't be playing Morris Sportelli because he didn't have a great game last time, and he probably won't have a good game this time either. 12 minutes on the clock. Carreras' goal kick over the halfway line to Clive Todd. Doesn't get it. Scott nicks in there for Brighton. Tanase. Forward to Scott once again. We've closed him down and tackled him. Jim Glendon's not going to get there. Tanase does. Paolo. Paolo plays the ball forward to Coyle. Plenty of space across in the right back. And does so at the back post. Lotombo with the goal. Lewis Coyle with the assist. We just fell asleep. Why did he get so much space to cross that in? 14 minutes on the clock, and there could be a return, or there could be another goal, to be honest, for Brighton. Long ball forward, Tanase doesn't win the header. Scott nicks in, though, and gets the ball on the halfway line. Plays out to Paolo. Coyle was making another run, does get the ball. Got Jamal for company this time. Ball forward instead to Cornhill. Takes it out wide himself. Crossed in at the front post. Tanase's made it two, or is it an own goal? It's an own goal, and it's Sportelli. Get off the pitch. I mean... It's hardly your fault, that one, but get off the pitch. Like, I can't be having you playing. That is two games in a row where you've just you've just cocked up. I feel like I might have overreacted there by doing that, but I don't care. Paolo with the corner for Brighton. Latomba unmarked to the front. Carreras makes a save. Is that the highlight? Doesn't look like it is. Carreras' is kick outfield from the from the goalkeeper. Damianov spins around for some reason. Plays out wide to Jim Glendon, the superstar. Jim Glendon back to Jamal. Yes, he does do it. Jamal's going to whip it in. Does so. Finds Clive Todd. Clive Todd's had a go. That was a good effort. It's over the bar, though. 40 minutes in, and we're not really getting a lot of action. 
half time and we defensively have just been awful. Right. I mean, well, what did you say? Their performance was disappointing. Okay. Uh, can I say something particularly to the attackers? Like, passionately, um, you have the ability to make the real difference. They didn't care. 55 minutes. Jamal gets the ball, plays it back to Carreras. Not sure what you're doing, Carreras. Get rid of it. There you go. Finds Jim Glendon on the halfway line. Back to Jamal. Montoya. Montoya needs some movement. Finds Gasser instead. Gasser's probably going to play it back to Montoya. Yes, he is. Jamal. Jamal and Montoya and Gasser passing it around. Jim Glendon. Gasser gets it. Glendon's got a bit of space. So does Petrelli. Petrelli, can he cross it in or can he go it alone? He's gone it alone. He's hit the base of the post, which for some reason stopped the ball dead. Jim Glendon is in danger of you, uh, removing his uh, perfect start to the season. He's on a 6.4. Changing it to be an attacking 72 minutes on the clock. Something needs to change. 77 minutes on the clock. And Jim Glendon. I'm sorry, buddy, but you are coming off. I have no left, left midfielders. I have no one who can play there. Damianov? Right, Damianov's going to go there. Todd can go there. Glendon can come off for Paul Oakdina. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's that way around. There we go. Let's see what happens. Is that going to work? Probably won't. Four minutes left to play of normal time. It doesn't look like it's worked at all. We've got a corner. Damianov takes it. Stevens gets it clear. Only as far as Clive Todd. Damianov would like it back if you can find him. He does. Cross it in. He's ran it instead. Schmidt, the German centre-back. Damianov again. Jumps over a tackle. Schmidt gets it again. He's had a go from outside the area. You're a centre-back, mate. You really shouldn't be doing that. Damianov with another corner. It's the 90th minute. It's cleared. Todd's going to get it in. Todd's clipped the top of the bar. So many chances, but they all seem to be long shots. Belt with the goal kick for Brighton. There's just over 30 seconds left to play. It is going to end 2-0. Not a good result. Not a good performance. Defensively, we are a shambles, I think is the best way to put it. Attacking-wise, although we haven't scored in this game, going forward, we're quite, quite good. When we can't defend, that's where our problem is. 10 seconds left to play. Montoya on the ball on the halfway line. Plays it across to... What was that? Stevie Simpson nicks in there. Ball over the top. Hold on. Are we going to get... No, we're getting nothing from it. We're getting nothing from that at all. It's a 2-0 defeat. And... Uh, I mean, Gas was under 7.9. Michael Gas was the only person on our team who played all right. That result then leaves us in sixth place at the end of this episode. It's still... It's not terrible. I'm okay with it. I mean, if we, if we actually go... Is it on here? No. Nope. Where am I going? On here. Season preview. They're expecting us to finish eighth. So... Sixth place is... I mean, we're on target for where we should be. We're not on target for where I want to be, but we're on target for where we should be. Next episode, I'm thinking of going around possibly this area. Reading, Reading Ipswich, maybe? Possibly those two. Um, I Again, as with all of these seasons now, I want to get through them fairly quickly. So, we're going to fly through probably... Maybe, or maybe we go even further. Maybe we go like Swansea Villa. Maybe we do that. Yeah, let's do Swansea Villa. So there's going to be a huge amount of games in between episodes. But that's fine because the latter half of the season is where it starts getting interesting. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2018 with Blackburn Rovers. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. And I will see you next time. <laughs>